Would you please have the comments to okay. Notice of a public meeting of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville pursuant to Chapter 551, Title 5 of the Texas Government Code. The Texas Open Meetings Act notice is hereby given that the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said city, will convene a workshop and executive session and a regular meeting on Tuesday, April 21, 2009 at 4.55 p.m., 5.05 p.m., and 6 p.m. in the Commission Chambers on the second floor of the Brownsville City Hall Federal Building, located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas, 78520. Workshop, presentation by Healthy Communities of Brownsville, environmental trend benders regarding the first anti-litter coloring book. Okay, item A, please. Mayor, may I have the floor? Uh, read item A. She read it. Yes. Oh, sure, okay. Yeah, Mayor, I would like to call up Ms. Uh, Sharon Putnett and the uh, uh, Healthy Communities of Bronzeville and the Environmental Trend, trend Benders to come and give a uh, presentation on their, uh, on their first uh, anti-litter coloring book. Thank you. Hey, you made the paper here. Uh, yeah. Good yeah. for you. Thank yeah. you for the work you do. Yeah. Nice you. picture, too. Congratulations. Well, good afternoon, Mayor Almada and city officials. Good um, afternoon. I, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to share with you some information about our recent project. I'm a member of a local volunteer group called Healthy Communities of Brownsville, and of course we have some of our group here this evening. Uh, this orga organization was formed about eight years ago through an effort by the Chamber of Commerce, and the mission is simple, to improve the quality of life in Brownsville. There are three divisions under this umbrella of healthy communities of Brownsville, health, education, and environmental. I am the chairperson of the environmental trend vendor group, and we have three goals. To generate awareness about local environmental issues, increase participation in recycling efforts, and to decrease the amount of litter throughout the city. We have been a very active group in our, excuse me? What was the last thing you said? Uh, decrease the amount of litter throughout the city. So it's, so it's uh, environmental issues, recycling, and litter. We have been a very active group for the past eight years. We have sponsored many school age contests that address environmental issues and recycling efforts. We participate in citywide cleanups and give presentations when called on. The environmental trend vendors have received both state and national awards for their environmental campaign. In 2005, we were honored by Keep Texas Beautiful with a first place civic award for environmental leadership and commitment to litter prevention, cleanup, education, and publicity. And we received the Distinguished Service Citation National Award from Keep Texas Beautiful. Now, our most recent project, as of last week, as a matter of fact, was the publication of an anti-litter coloring book printed in English and Spanish targeted toward five-year-olds, first, second, and third graders. The Public Welfare Foundation and the Brownsville Beautification Committee helped us achieve our goal with grant monies. The Brownsville Herald has also been very supportive by printing it and helping with distribution. We had 40,000 copies printed to be given to students in public and private schools, as well as the Children's Museum, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, United Way, and the Chamber of Commerce, to name a few. We worked on this project for approximately a year. We wanted to get word out that we are all responsible for litter, and we all need to be a part of the solution. 
and we need to take action to correct the problem in our community. Personally speaking, I am tired of seeing plastic bags stuck to all of our beautiful foliage in our community. It is an eyesore to say nothing of what it is doing to our wildlife. We are a birding mecca in Brownsville and we need to protect and preserve our wildlife. This is a dream come true for our environmental trend vendor group. Hopefully this is the first of many projects to address our litter problem. We certainly have a dedicated group and we do have a shared vision. If you would please turn to the front of your coloring book, there should be one for each of you. Mr. Cameron, do you have, do you have a, 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 okay. If you'll notice in the first part, we have put a page there where children are encouraged to sign their name and take a pledge. We want the children to take ownership of this and again, start to be part of the solution. As stated on the inside cover of the booklet, the coloring book is designed to empower children with the information they need in order to develop attitudes about their role in controlling litter in their community. Of one thing I am certain in my 41 year history as an educator, teach the children. When you teach the children, they in turn will teach their parents and encourage their parents to participate. I have found that to be true over the years. Now, please look at the back cover. Of course, I want you to look at the whole thing, but in, in, your, whole, in your own time. Uh, but look at the back cover. We are hoping in the very near future to have 11 by 17 posters made of this, where Rio says, let's talk trash, take responsibility, and start helping. It will be translated into Spanish. We are going to share this with businesses, schools, churches, we're going to share this with uh, some businesses in Matamoros because it will be translated again into Spanish and we are in the process of looking for underwriters and we already have our first underwriter for this and we will have quite a few made to get, again, to get the word out. Please share this booklet with your family and friends. Call the Brownsville Herald if you need any copies there. We have a few left. On behalf of Healthy Communities of Brownsville, and the Environmental Trend Bender Group. Thank you for your time. Yes. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Has anyone else wants to say something? Oh, there? yes. Uh, Commissioner Atkinson. I'm going to tell you, this might be a good idea because I know, like on the border, on the bridges, especially Gateway Bridge and B&M, you get thousands of kids in that range that you're talking about that come over. I don't know if you maybe talk to somebody from customs and just have them there for the kids. <coughs> I don't see how why people couldn't give these to these kids coming across. A lot of them come to school in Brownsville. Yes, that that is true. <laughs> that is true. And we did have a group from Madam Morris come over recently, right, Dr. McGee? And this afternoon to pick up some some coloring mm. books. But again, we want we want to get this out. Uh, we we hope we printed enough. Uh, we who knows we may need to have a, another printing of it. And it's on the website for healthy communities. And, and for the, the Brownsville Herald. Herald. It's on you the web. Can download it. Oh, anybody else like to say something for me? No. May I, Mayor? May this I is, this is our opportunity. <clears throat> we have a captive audience. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Bionet, I, I really appreciate this. And, and uh, you know, um, we had an eye opener this last uh, Easter Sunday. Yeah. <clears throat> on, on Monday, I, I, on Sunday, I called uh, Mr. Kabler and because uh, and, and, I received several calls from from uh, uh, people that were abusing our parks. And, and thank you, Mr. Kepler, for taking quick action. He's in out police cars to uh, the sports park and also security from uh, American Investigations uh, and Surveillance who do, who do security for us. There were people parked on, on the grass at this new park that cost us, I don't know, whatever it is, two, 42 million or 40 million. No, it didn't. <clears throat> well, whatever it cost. <laughs> How much did it cost? We're up to 20 million. 20 million, okay. 20 million dollars. But I apologize, uh, Commissioner. 20 million. And, you know, it was, it was so sad that uh, my grandchildren saw all the trash yeah. and all the, all the vehicles that had four wheelers running, uh, racing around the, the lake. Uh, were, uh, uh, they had trucks parked on the grass. We had people uh, that were jumped the fences to play on the artificial turf fields. 
it's, it's an abuse, and, and I want to ask the people of Brownsville uh, and, uh, to uh, take care of the parks and, and, and to work with you in, in picking up trash. I was at the uh, uh, Lincoln Park and also uh, the, um, the other park uh, where they play soccer. My, my grandchildren play soccer. And, and a young man from, uh, from uh, Porter High School and I picked up about 40 pounds of trash, empty beer bottles, empty beer cans. It, it was so ugly, you know, and please, Brownsville, you know, take care of your areas, take care of your parks. They're yours to use, but not abuse. You are absolutely correct. As a matter of fact, uh, this group was part of the cleanup, the citywide cleanup on April 4th. And I ended up going to Oliveira Park to watch a softball game the other day and I could not believe the condition of it since the cleanup. And uh, so it, it is something we need to address, young and old alike. We do need to address it and keep, take care. And, it, it, and it's a pride issue. It really is. We, we need to take pride in our community. I love this community, and I want it to be the best and safest it can be. And, but we all need to participate. And, and it's like I said in a presentation recently at the university. Oh, we can blame our government. We can blame our city officials. We can blame whoever we want to blame. But the reality is, it is us. We are the community, and we need to clean it up. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Any, Does anybody anyone else wish to speak? May I be on the floor? Commissioner Camarillo. Uh, Ms. Pugin and uh, healthy, uh, healthy communities, I want to personally say thank you all very, very much for all the work that you all have done, not just with the anti litter coloring book, but as you mentioned, years past and all the things that you all have done, and the other many volunteers who have joined your efforts into helping stop littering, but recycling. You know, I always tell people when we talk about it, where recycling started, I, it, it really started with you, Ms. Pugnett, and, and at Episcopal Day School, and I think it's just transcended into something so great and powerful that the whole community is being consumed by it. Um, and it's important that we, as elected officials, um, continue to help you all do the work that you all are doing and involving the volunteers. You're right, it starts at home and it starts with our youth. Um, first and foremost. I mean, those kids will grow up and they're going to do, I mean, again, their habits, you know, will really help change this community. And so we must continue to work with them and work with you all. And I, I really do appreciate you all taking your personal time to do the hard work that you do. And your cleanup efforts on April the 4th were huge. And as you know, you, you we'll talk about this later on, but, you know, being at STEL and talking to the kids about the issues that they face and being able to, you know, look at different, you know, policy making decisions that hopefully we'll get to at one point to make it a, a real, real, uh, make it significant enough that their issues are being heard, but there is policy to put into place to make these, make these issues resolved. So again, I want to thank you all. This is extremely a huge, huge deal for Bronzo, and it's because of you all that we have this. So thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Congratulations. Thank you all. Congratulations, Ms. Pinnett, and everybody else involved. Thank you so much for your volunteerism. It's appreciated on behalf of the city of Bronzo. Thank you. Um, executive session. Executive session. Consultation with attorney pursuant to section 551071 of the Texas Government Code regarding cause number 2007 06 2918-8. Brownsville Police Officers Association versus the City of Brownsville. Executive session B. Consultation with attorney pursuant to section 551071 of the Texas Government Code regarding collective bargaining, bargaining matters. Executive Session C, consultation with attorney pursuant to Section 551071 of the Texas Government Code regarding issues pertaining to the extraterritorial jurisdiction and pending legislation. Executive Session D, discussion pursuant to Section 551078 of the Texas Government Code regarding economic development. May I move that we go to executive session? Second. Second. We have a motion, but Commissioner Camarillo second, by Commissioner Garza. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. We will uh, reconvene. <clears throat> Thank you for waiting. Uh, welcome to our chambers. Uh, would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> Place the flag. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas flag, pledge allegiance to thee. Juan uh, Morales. Hey, can I get a copy of the agenda? Ask your welcome to our chamber. Let us pray. Heavenly and precious Father, we come before you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mighty God, I pray for our city. I pray, Lord God, for the citizens, each and every one of them and their families. I pray, Lord God, that you keep them safe and guide them with the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord God, for our mayor. I pray, Lord God, that you give them wisdom, knowledge, and a constant hunger for wisdom and understanding to take care of these problems. Mighty God, I pray for the commissioners, each and every one of them. Lord God, also give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Father, we ask you for their families. And Lord God, we ask you also, Lord God, that you bless each and every one of them in their lives and give them good health. And mighty God, fill them with the love of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. 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 Um, Pastor Bert, uh, want Thank you to make the announcement. You make the announcement, please. Uh, we want to invite uh, all the, the mayor, the commissioners, and the city to the National Day of Prayer meeting. Uh, at Luby's Cafeteria at Sunrise Mall, May 7th at 7 o'clock a.m. We have a speaker coming down from Austin, Texas, and uh, it should be a blessing to everyone involved, and we'll pray for the city and for our leaders as well. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Mayor, if I may. Um, a, a request of, um, if I may. some, some uh, members. Uh, we, could I have a motion to move up the public comments to the front, please? Not a problem. I second that motion. We have a motion by Commissioner Trani, second by Commissioner Garza. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. We'll move up the public comments and we'll start with our agendas things here. Before uh, that, your, uh, Mayor, if I may, I think that we could all uh, go for the Pledge of Allegiance to the Texas State flag. We can find that the, the State Library and Archives on the Commission website. I think the City Commission has its homework. Since Mr. Longoria was not here today, <laughs> see if we can uh, do that for next time. Maybe take turns. Yeah. Good point, Commissioner. Good point. Okay. Um, Rene Rodriguez, please. Ms. Rodriguez, you got three three minutes. The city commission cannot respond, cannot engage, and the uh, city attorney here, uh, if he finds anything appropriate, he will bring it to your attention. So, city attorney, do your work. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my name is uh, Rene D. Rodriguez, and I'm the unit manager for uh, Marriott Residence Inn. You need um, to get the mic closer to you, too. My name is uh, Rene Rodriguez, and I'm the unit manager for Marriott Residence Inn. Mayor, City Commissioners, our local industry has been a, a key economic driver for Brownsville, impacting local businesses as a result of uh, travel spending, generating sales in lodging, food services, recreation, transportation, and retail businesses. These sales also support jobs for the city of Brownsville and also contributes with tax revenue to retail businesses and, in, consequences, in consequence, hotel motel tax receipts. This is an incredibly difficult time for our hotel industry, as our urgent priorities are to increase occupancy and revenue. I have no doubt my hotel, like any other hotel, will continue facing critical time frames for right decisions, preparing business, and defining priorities. The forecast for the industry in September 2008 projected 5.9 percent drop in occupancy 
and a weak average daily rate growth. Being this the beginning of an uneven, greater, protracted decline expected for our industry, given the speed of the severity of the downturn in the national economy. And very unfortunately, both have already occurred, exceeding our respects in quarter one, 2009. Projected deterioration in our industry performance is being driven primarily by a decline in 2009 of lodging demand, projecting now a new forecast that will average 7.9% decline in revenue for 2009. The magnitude of the decline in hotel revenue forecast as recently as September 2008 has almost doubled since then. Our outlook for the hotel industry has deteriorated dramatically in a fairly short period of time. We were pessimistic. This past summer, when we forecasted 3% decline in revenue, it is concerning how fast market conditions have weakened and the rapidly changing outlook for the hotel industry. Uncertainty is a greatest boogaboo. We hoteliers need look no further than the recent hotel performance reports to realize that the level of uncertainty resulting and resulting volatility that exists today. In the current environment, all prices are falling, room rates, other revenues, profits, and ultimately values. This condition will likely persist into 2010. That being said, I wonder which are the opportunities that will emerge in the near term that Excuse will be. Me. Would somebody like to yield uh, their time to this gentleman? Mr. Garvey. I, I'm pretty much done, sir. Okay. I appreciate your attention. Um, we urge the city of Brownsville and legal, uh, other local organizations for support. And uh, some of my fellows are going to express some thoughts as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is um, William Garza. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor, City Commissioners, City Manager, uh, City Secretary. My name is William Garza. I'm the manager of La Quinta Hotel. And we're feeling, uh, just like Renee had said, uh, the hotel industry is really down this year. We're really hurting. We've heard uh, many comments from people saying, well, the economy uh, worldwide, nationwide, is affecting everybody, and it is. But our, our hotels that we have in FAR and Laredo, their revenues are up this year. So we really can't use some of these excuses that have been used before as uh, the crime across in Mexico, when really it's further up the coast it's, that's hurting more than we are, and yet they're doing better. I think this afternoon we met as an organization trying to form our hotel motel association, and I, it's good that we did meet so we can discuss these ideas and issues and see how we can make things better. We'd like to plan a future meeting with a hotel motel or the uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau to see how we can uh, guide them or give them ideas on how we think it should be our hotel industry should be promoted. But we're all here. We're all uh, feeling the pinch, and I just hope that uh, uh, y'all can do whatever you can uh, to help us. I know y'all formed the Culture Committee, which I think is a great idea. We'd love to help other organizations to promote Brownsville, but, uh, but remember this hotel tax money, a lot of it is meant to promote uh, the hotel industry heads and beds. So uh, just please remember that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sunny. Krishna? Hi, Sunny Krishna. Hi, my name is Sunny Krishna. I present one of the hotel in Brownsville. Since the last couple of years, our revenue keep continuing going down. Um, this year, actually, last quarter of 2008 till now, our revenue have dropped 30 percent. And we don't have that many visitors that used to come from Mexico as well as throughout the United States. Uh, we have worked with the Visitor Bureau for the last several years and we're asking their support to continue to work with us. Uh, we wanted to develop uh, some program where we can do a Brownsville as a destination. It used to be a Brownsville destination, but now it seems like visitors are not coming to Brownsville. They are going to other border towns such as McAllen, Laredo, and other parts of the country. Um, we want to suggest that, or some ideas, 
uh, to our visitor bureau that they can help us to develop a program for the marketing segment so we can put some more heads in the bat in Brownsville. And that will help our Brownsville um, revenue-wise, such as we're getting a, a golf tournament to Brownsville. They're currently in, in, in place. If we can develop some more program or some sports team, other event, we can bring it to Brownsville, that will help our economy to continue going in the right directions. I don't know who assigned that, those kind of program, but if city can be proactive to develop some of the program, invite some other schools, other association, other, other teams from out of the state, that will help us to grow our economy. Um, bottom line is our hotel industry is hurting. We are down about 30% this year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, PK. Hi, my name is Arun, manager for PK Patel. You uh, need to. Uh, hello. Get closer. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. I represent one of the hotels here in Brownsville, <coughs> the Boca Chica Inn and Suites. Uh, as said earlier, uh, compared to last year, the hotel industry and the revenues are going down. Um, it's like 10, it's like 20 to 30 percentage of the revenue compared to last year is down this year. The hotel, some of the hotels are really struggling. And um, the tourists and travelers are com coming less to this uh, town. Mm. Also the Brownsville Visitors and Convention Bureau, which is supposed to do something for this hotel industry, I don't think they're doing a great effort to increase revenue for these hotels. So I expect the city and other people to look at this matter and help the hotel industry in whatever way they can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Doris Pettis. Yeah. Respect uh, Commission, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Commissioner, you know. The business is going down very bad, you know. I mean, everybody knows, nothing a secret, you know. But why in McAllen and Laredo the business is going up? I don't understand though. In McAllen, when you come from, they come from Monterey, every 50 feet they have a sign. Every 50, I mean, sorry, 50 miles they have a sign. What do we have a sign? We don't have any sign anywhere though. I'm putting my own money now in Matamoros to put a sign over there so bring the customers over here though. So something has to be done, you know. And also there's one hotel. There's one hotel doing very bad. They have 120 rooms, 120 rooms. And he fired everybody, and he's all alone working 16 hours, 16 hours. And then only 10 room average he's renting over there. He cannot even pay his electric bill, you know. So you have to consider this. It's a very bad situation. Otherwise, if anyone, any one hotel goes out of business, remember that. If any one hotel goes out of business, we will be going back 15 years, 20 years backward again. So please consider and take care for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Doris Pettis here or not? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Luani, spoke. <coughs> Mr. Udesti. Robert Udesti. Roberto Reste, 1220, Calle Pluton, Galaxia, commissioners and mayors and public. I come with a concern about the May 9th election on Saturday. I spoken to voters and I asked them a question simple, where do you vote? I, my voting district is Garden Park. It will be closed. When I told that to some people, they said, well, if it's closed, I'm not going to vote, okay? Web, I'm sorry, another one in that area is Via Nueva. It's going to be closed. I talked to people in that area. They told me the same thing. Well, it's closed, I'm not going to vote. It seems like you did consolidate, and I got the paper here from Mr. Roger Ortiz. My concern, sir, and I hope you all can do something about this. Put a sign in front of those clothes because Hudson's closed. My son didn't even know. He's going to vote at Hannah. It's closed. But let, let uh, me inter interject, uh, Mr. Oresti. This you should take up with the proper uh, 
we're not in charge of the election. We're not in charge of the election. You need to go through the proper channels and get that addressed. And I'm sure they'll work with you. To come here, we can't even respond to what you're saying. Uh, I am the chair and I have the flexibility here to bring it to the attention, but uh, it's not fair to put us in this situation where you come here with a complaint. That's it, a legitimate complaint. I'm not saying it's not a, a, a legitimate complaint, but you need to go to the proper okay, department and that's with Roger Ortiz, who handles the uh, election. Is that right, the city attorney? That's correct. And get him to do. He's in charge. We pay him to do the election. Yes, so sir. So if you would please do that, we'd appreciate it. I did speak to him, sir. And that's where I got, and I asked him the question, who approved this? We said the same. You yep. said it. Yeah, but, and, but at the time but, that it was approved, you yes. should, some people should have come here and said, hey, we need to do this. We I understand, sir. But, but the thing the, is, the, this is in, what I'm getting here. All I'm asking is, you need to put some type of sign, English and Spanish, to direct the people where to go and vote. Because this is going to hinder a lot of people from voting. The elderly, those don't have uh, automobiles. They live right there, sir. Nobody's disagreeing with you. I'm just telling you, go, instead of grandstanding here, go to Roger Ortiz, file your request, okay? That's the proper place. We passed this here. At the time, nobody came here and said, hey, you need to do this, whatever. Unfortunately, it's already done, okay? So right now, I, sh I strongly recommend you sit down with Roger Ortiz, and I'm sure he will accommodate you by putting a sign. If not, I will do a sign personally for you that you can put up if that will satisfy you. The point is, is that it does have a solution. Your, 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 your concern is a legitimate concern, and go take it to the proper authority. That's what I'm asking you to do. Oh, that's why we have you, sir, and the rest of you commissioners to I'm help not us. Thank elections. you. Thank Please. you. Okay, out of order. Next, next person. Uh, Ramon Perez. Roman Perez. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I don't see well without my glasses. It's with okay. My glasses. I figure after two years, you figure out what my name was, but I appreciate it. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to say, first off, I'm not here as representing a, a church. I'm not here representing a father. You can't hear me, Charlie? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, I appreciate it. I'm not here representing a church. I'm not here representing anybody. I'm just representing, a, I'm just representing myself as a parishioner of a Good Shepherd Catholic Church. On May 2nd, May 3rd, uh, Commissioner Longoria should know this, uh, there's going to be a Kermes, uh Spring Carnival at... Uh, Good Shepherd Catholic Church. I'm only doing this because usually the church is able to put off-premise signs throughout the community on private property or business property to announce their, their um, get mess. Unfortunately, this year, uh, the city has said that a church is a business. A church is a business and cannot promote their own uh, events because it's, they're making money. That's what they're telling me. Um, I did not realize that when you all passed the signed ordinance in 2006 that you all automatically made a church in their event a business. Your signed ordinance stipulates, and the city attorney, who, uh, your new city attorney might be able to look at this, your, your signed ordinance stipulates that a church, a synagogue, and a civic organization is exempted from having to have permits around the community. You cannot prevent a property owner like myself or anybody else in the community from being able to put a sign on their own property. You can't even you shouldn't be able to do that. But if for whatever reason you all feel that you, the church has to do that, a church cannot do these off-premise signs, I urge this commission and I urge anybody in the future commission to find a way to make some sort of amendment like you do for political signs to say up to 60 days from a prior to election you can put up signs. I'm asking you this because it's an honest request from very, very, various churches. I know of another church that's going to have another good mess and they're being told that they can't put up their off-premise signs. It, uh, to me, it, 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 it upsets me because we have a, a trailer that unknowingly violates the, the sign ordinance, at least in my opinion, in Southmost against two of our commissioners who aren't even running in that area. But we in Southmost have to put up with a crappy sign. Unfortunately, the city is not doing anything, but they're forcing down this sign ordinance that says a business is a, a church is a business. And I know it makes you, might make you feel uncomfortable for you to know this, but you all have, you should provide some oversight and be able to help these churches who are trying to help the community. And I would wish that at least 
one of you would say, hey, this isn't right. Allow us to be able to put up these signs. So I thank you very much for taking time to do this. And since I have a little bit of time, um, the city attorney, I'd, I'd ask the city attorney to not allow the um, Kamara Amala to be able to interrupt somebody who's having their three minutes speak. He, he knowingly violated the ordinance and saying that to Mr. Uresi that he's not following the proper channels. Well, you, sir, are not following the proper channels by you speaking when he has his three minutes and you're violating his rights as a public commenter. And that's not right. On top of that, this commission did vote in the end of February to allow certain uh, polling precincts to be able to be open for the election up in May. You as a commission still have time. May 2nd, I think, is your next meeting or sometime in the first week of May. You all can put it on the agenda to be able to put up those signs. Thank you. Your time's up. Okay, um, for those who come here with complaints, I urge you first to sit down through proper channels <clears throat> because it's not fair to this commission that cannot engage, cannot respond, and we're hit cold. We don't have the ordinance here. We can't even get into a discussion with you about it. If you want to be a constructive citizen and really help the best way to do it is go through the channels. There's, we have city management that's in charge of running the city. He has department heads underneath him that I know are very good public servants and they're willing to help you if it's something that they can help you with. To come here and just hit us cold with things to where we can't respond, it's not fair. That's grandstanding in my opinion. And it's okay, that's what you want to do. But if you really want to contribute something, instead of being an obstacle, be somebody that offers solutions and sit down with the city attorney, city <coughs> manager, who I'm sure is willing to help you. Mr. Resendez, please. Thank you, sir. Continue. My name is Alex Resendez. <coughs> I'm concerned about the Valley and Texas and South Texas and you guys and everything because I live here. Este, es un poco diferente lo que voy a hablar yo. It's a little bit different. <coughs> I am concerned porque otros años, some other years, I came here and you all were very nice. You all did the right thing when people needed sandbags. En poco tiempo, maybe July, September, we could have a flood, we could have a disaster like they've been having some other places. I would like for you all to get together, have shelters, para la gente de Matamoros o la gente de Brownsville o la gente pobre que no tienen donde irse because I have reason to believe ojalá que Dios no, verdad we, I'm going to pray about it we, I hope all the churches listen and pray about it we don't get a hurricane but we have been very close to having a disaster down here in the valley we have seen a lot of rain we have seen things that happen <clears throat> maybe we'll have a drought my concern is, Mayor, you've been doing the right thing, Mayor. I'm not against you. You guys have been working together. You guys are all right, okay? But we have to bring the issues that we think that are good for the city, okay? La vez pasada les dije la calle esa que tienen ahí todavía está igual, la que está close to the academy. But anyway, this is about hurricanes. This is about disasters. Are we ready? Is, 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 is the people like the National Guard or los demás que van a defender nuestra, nuestra gente cuando anden todos en problemas? We have to get ready. Yes, that's all my concern. Por favor, do something about this. Thank you, Thank Mr. Resendez. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's nobody else in public comments. We'll go <coughs> back to the action on items discussed in the executive session. <coughs> Action item A, consideration <coughs> of possible action regarding cost number 2007 2918-8, Brownsville Police Officers Association versus the City of Brownsville. Mr. Mayor, may I have the floor, please? I'd like at this time to make a motion to dismiss the appeal and execute satisfaction of judgment in the case of Brownsville Police Officers Association, charter number 290577 versus the City of Brownsville in case number 2007 dash 06 dash 2918 dash A. Second. We have a motion. We have a second from Commissioner Cisneros. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. <coughs> item A B. Action item B. Consideration and possible action regarding collective bargaining matters. Mayor, I would motion to approve the 
City of Brownsville uh, ratify the BPOA contract, second. second bargain agreement. Second. We have a second by Commissioner Zero. No, Camarillo. Any discussion? Any favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <clears throat> item C. Item C, consideration and possible action regarding resolution number 2009-029, requesting the Texas State Delegation to withdraw all pending bills relating to Brownsville's ETJ disannexation and offering possible alternatives to said legislation. Mayor, I would move to approve, and I'd ask that the uh, language in the last paragraph on the first page be amended to indicate willing to enter into agreements and remove the word uh, these. Second that motion. A motion by Commissioner Grant, second by Commissioner Garza. Any discussion? All in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Item D. Item D, consideration and action on final agreement with American Eagle Airlines. Moved approved. Second. second. <laughs> Last time. Uh, motion approved by Commissioner Torriani, yes, second sir. by Commissioner Longoria. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Larry Brown, too. Okay, Thank would it be right. proper, wait a second, do we have representatives by, by the people who can sign this contract? Um, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, we do. We have some representatives from the police would union. Would it be proper to ask them to come and sign here? It would be appropriate, it's on the agenda. It would be appropriate? Okay. Would you gentlemen please come up and we'll have a formal signing ceremony here. May I have a blue pen? There you go. Please. Congratulations, guys. I never like to do work. <laughs> do you have a camera, uh, Bill? City commissioners, you want to come around here, sign this? Congratulations, sir. Exhibits, uh, city attorney, we do not have to sign, right? The correct, exhibits, correct. We do not you you could initial them, Mr. Mayor. So initial them. Please here and make copies and give them any copies. Thank you very much. Come. Come. American Airlines. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new airline service in Brownsville.
Thank you. Thank you. We wish American Eagle the very best. Okay. Okay. That I'm going to dispense with. Going to the mayor's report, City Secretary. Mm -hmm. Mayor's, re Secretary. mayor's okay. report, Bronzo Paws, May 2nd, 2009, ribbon cutting of the animal clinic, the dog park animal shelter, PUB capital improvements, fees and rates, parliamentary procedures, public housing, camera and workforce, border wall, and the Weir project. Okay, uh, I just want to make the announcement. Brownsville's Paws, in conjunction with the uh, uh, City Animal Shelter in the City of Brownsville, will be hosting a ribbon cutting of the Animal Clinic, dedication of the uh, dog park, uh, in the name of uh, um, uh, Mrs. Stillman, um, Catherine Brown Stillman, on May 2nd, 2009. The, the public's invited. There's going to be a bounce, uh, you know, for kids to play. There's going to be food. It starts at 11 o'clock on Saturday, May 2nd. It'll continue through Sunday. This is an opportunity for the community to come, see the facilities, and hopefully you will take a pet with you if you like and adopt it and uh, spare it from it being euthanized. Um, a lot of people are working very hard to put this event together, and we welcome and invite everybody to this event at the Brownsville Animal uh, Shelter, May 2nd, 2009. It's right uh, on FM 511. When you get off the expressway, uh, turn right if you're going north and uh, it's about a, less than a quarter of a mile on your right side. Um, on the PUB capital improvements, uh, fees and rates, uh, the first public hearing, we adopted 2,600, and it's up again for uh, uh, later consideration. I want to point out that we have spent, seven, according to what I got from PUB, seven, six, $769,321.43 on studies. That does not include the in-house studies we've done uh, through the planning department to, 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 to introduce a uh, land use and capital improvements for the next 10 years with a recommendation of 3,486. Since that was not accepted and 2,600 is a lot better than the 280 that was being uh, paid by developers at, at, at the, uh, before now which uh, put the burden on the, on the rate payers at 97%. So we welcome the 2,600, but I stern, strongly urge that we reconsider that based on the uh, amount spent on the studies that recommends this is what we need to uh, keep up with the future growth of the city of Brownsville and it, to do it into a in a responsible way, which allows uh, not only the impact fees to, to, to be raised to 3486 but also rates that need to be raised in order to do the capital improvements, which will equal to uh, like $189 million that will be dependent upon those rates to over, over uh, the next few years in order to fund them. If we don't raise rates, we cannot do the capital improvements, and we can't kill growth. Uh, so I strongly recommend that... Uh, the study be adopted as presented. If not, we have to do uh, and accept and, and put at risk the future growth of the city. Um, parliamentary procedures, I'm glad to hear that uh, people are waiting to be recognized. Um, in some instances, I, I disagree with, with the ruling that was made uh, by the uh, parliamentarian uh, on, on the impact fee issue when the vote was taken. Uh, the only way I felt that it should have been uh, reconsidered was through a motion uh, because the vote uh, was cast at 3,486, but and then it was uh, 
the, mo the, uh, the item was amended um, when the vote was already taken. And I think that, that was improper a procedure. It should have been made through a motion to reconsider, and that was not done. Or it could be done through uh, posting the agenda to rescind, which uh, calls for a two-thirds vote, which I uh, tried to do by putting it on the agenda, and, and it was not allowed on the agenda. Um, also, the, I've been looking into uh, who requires two signatures to put things on the agenda. And as far as I've determined, none of the public entities require two signatures to to, to put anything on the agenda, and I think that hurts the city when the, the city mayor cannot put items on the agenda by himself. As we witnessed today, we had the hotel motel tax, I mean, hotel motel uh, owners here that wanted a workshop. I asked that it be posted on the agenda. It was removed from the agenda, uh, and I think that's not, that's not the right thing to do. We should have had a workshop as requested by them, uh, because I think that's democracy, that's, that's transparency, and, the, and that allows people to have a voice, even if it's through the mayor or any commissioner who wishes to put something on the agenda. It should not require two, two signatures. And like I said, uh, this, the, uh, what I've looked into is all the public entities here do not require two signatures, as I have determined thus far. Okay. Um, on public housing, um, uh, <coughs> there's a lot of good progress there, and you'll be hearing some later on. On the Cameron workforce, there's a report from the uh, auditors that raised a lot of, a lot of huge concerns and deficits and recommendations of, uh, to take corrective action. It's been a slow process, and uh, we, have, we have come to the point to where change is really coming through to, to the workforce. Uh, we replaced uh, board members on there, which I think has, has made it... Uh, more accountable, more transparency, and uh, I think uh, 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 more productive. Um, the Cameron Workforce uh, has changed uh, executive director. We have an interim, interim director that's also doing an analysis of the Cameron Workforce and its policies and its procedures, and I'm happy to hear that it's very positive. I'm very proud of this new board that's really working very hard to improve the Cameron Workforce and to service the community that it's intended to service. There will be a lot of opportunities this summer for young people. Uh, I think we have a grant of $900,000 to uh, get employment through the Cameron Workforce, uh, to be a, a, like, uh, uh, work for different companies, and the Cameron Workforce will pay for, pay for them from uh, June through the end of uh, September. So uh, people need to be uh, uh, on the lookout for this uh, opportunity, and if young people want to the opportunity to uh, contact the Cameron Workforce to see what programs are available. On the border wall, I read the letter sent by DHS, and uh, I understand this is their position, but that's all it's stating, their position. It doesn't mean that it's engraved in stone, because we do have a judge that can change the course of things as they did with the university. And uh, I'm flying tomorrow to uh, Washington, uh, to meet with DHS and continue the uh, dialogue for the for the, the city of Brownsville to make sure that uh, the Weir project is considered as an alternative. The Weir project right now cannot be considered, as pointed out by DHS, as an alternative because we don't have the permits. But uh, as my understanding is, June 25th, Gigi, is D-Day, when uh, we will have another binational com uh, committee hearing with uh, IBWC and CELA who are overseeing this project. Everything's on schedule, as from my understanding. Uh, uh, the field tests are being done, and a resolution will be uh, 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 made on June 25th, either yes or no, whether this project is viable or not. If it's yes, then the permitting process starts, which I think should not take very long. Then it can be considered as a viable project, having the permits. Till right now, I understand DHS's position, that it cannot, and I understand why, because we don't know. And unless uh, we, they know, uh, I don't blame them for considering. So we bought time, and I think that's, been, that's helped us, and uh, I appreciate all the citizens have uh, supported the opposition to the border wall, which allowed us to buy time, and hopefully uh, we will all benefit from this and get the weird project uh, to be a legitimate and viable project as an alternative to the border wall. 
And of course, a weird project, like I just mentioned, uh, there will be a meeting June 25th. Based on that, um, that's my uh, my report. Now we go on to the commission report. Mr. Uh, Atkinson, Commissioner Atkinson. Mayor, can I, can I speak? Sure. Uh, on the issue of the home, uh, hotel motel workshop, I'm, I'm going to take responsibility. It was my fault and my staff, uh, and I'm working it out. And not, not the fault of any uh, anybody else. Uh, city Manager, I'm not blaming anybody. All I'm saying is that if I have the authority to put something on the agenda, I don't have to go through you. And I, 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 don't, I, I don't depend on you to put it on the agenda. That's what I'm saying. So it doesn't depend whether you're here in town or not here in town or anything. The mayor should have that authority. If staff gets put something on the agenda, the city manager can put something on the agenda, the mayor should be able to put something on the agenda. And it, it should not be dependent upon it, it, it somebody It was our else. intention to put it on. I know. It, I understand. It, and I talked to you about it. And you left town. But that happens. So that ties my hands. Because I also wrote a letter, a memo, trying to get commissioners to sign off and, and put it on the agenda. And uh, there was an effort made, but I can't spend all day trying to track everybody down. We didn't receive it. I, uh, some, some I didn't never received it. Garcia did. <clears throat> I did. I, I received did. it, and, and uh, I think well, I, made one, I made one attempt to call you. Wait This is not for discussion. Well, you're bringing it up, yeah, you're bringing saying, it up man. I rule. This is not you for discussion. All I'm saying is you you I should not. I should not. No, you're not recognized. You have to be recognized. All I'm saying is I should not have to track anybody down to put something in the agenda in the interest of this community. It should not depend on anybody saying yes or no. Everybody should have that right to put something on the agenda if their constituents are asking to be heard. It's not open for discussion. I have not recognized anybody. The only one I'm recognizing right now is Commissioner Atkinson based on what he's got right here. Bounce well, Commissioner I, I will first Tournament, Sports Park, and Border Wall. Before, now, these are the rules that you outlined for me, and I expect you to adhere to them, too. Well, I, before I want you to take a cheap shot at us, either. Yeah, I mean, sir, you're out of order. I'll be out of order. But you're still, out of you're order. You need to abide by your own rules that you, okay. you want to put something on the agenda, put it on the agenda. As far as our, my turn being up, I'll yield the floor to Commissioner Longoria before I do mine. I, then I'll do mine. You see, that's, that's what happens. That's for a two-thirds vote. Pe pe people can't abide by their that's own rules. That's for a two-thirds vote. That's, that's part of my I'll make a motion that Commissioner Longoria be allowed to speak. Second. Okay, we have a motion in the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's parliamentary procedure. It doesn't, your report doesn't allow you to take cheap shots at us and then not expect us to, <clears throat> to counter, okay? So that's, that's all it is, Pat. Just, if you're gonna take a cheap shot, allow for us to be able to respond, to have a response. That's all it is. Can I get the hands of anybody who was reached by the mayor? Out of order, wait to be recognized. The gentleman is speaking. Let him finish, let him finish. Please abide by your own to rules. Continue, okay. To continue on that, uh, you mentioned on your report that you are going to be going to Washington as a representative of the city. You are, represent, you are the mayor of the city, no doubt. Respect to that, yes, you have your position and you have every right to go. But you are not allowed to make a decision on behalf of the city without it pertaining to this council. That's all I have to say on that. Next person on the agenda. I'm done. You, you yield, right? I'm done. You're done. Commissioner Atkinson. All right. I'd like to welcome 140 ladies that are in town, they're in Brownsville for the Brownsville Historic Open, which will be taking place this weekend. And really starting tonight, there's a banquet forum tonight at Cobbleheads. Uh, you got 140 amateur. Uh, professionals. Uh, they're, pro they're professionals, but they're amateur. They're one tier away from the LPGA. And they're here, they're here to play golf, they're here to taste the yeah. foods that Brownsville has to offer from the different restaurants we have here. So I'd like, on behalf of the City Commission, to welcome these ladies here, and on behalf of the Convention of Visitors Bureau, who cannot be here to welcome these people, uh, I was asked to, to say a few words, and those are my words. Please, you know, Wednesday, they have a practice round. Thursday, Friday, Saturday is a tournament. We encourage all, all citizens of Brownsville to go out there to Rancho Viejo and partake of a, a, a good tournament that's going to be out there. So you'll see some upcoming stars that uh, will be part of the LPGA one day. So it's, it's a good chance for our youth, adults, to go out there and enjoy seeing uh, uh, some professionals, athletes go at it. Uh, with that, I'll move on to the sports park. 
I'd just like to let you know, you know, the sports park is coming along great. I want to let people know on June 26th to the 28th, the Parks and Rec, Chris Patterson, his staff, Tony Saavedra, they went up to a, they went up to a conference for AAU, which is the American Athletes Union. They went up and they, they, they captured a tournament, a national tournament for, for Brownsville. We're going to have 60 to 80 teams here for our soccer national tournament, championship tournament. And I can't say enough about the Parks and Rec Department doing their job, to, along with Bina Ayala from the Conventional Services Bureau. They've done a great job to bring this tournament here. I'd like to bring Chris up here to talk a little bit about it, because we also have the Brownsville Sports Festival that goes along with it. That's, I mean, th we're talking teams from all over the United States that are, come, that are going to come down to play soccer. They recognize the talent, the soccer competitiveness here in Brownsville, so they were able to, and I want to give you props, because the, your department and the Convention Visitors Bureau did an awesome job, and if you want to elaborate on it, I'd like for you to, so the people at home can know what's coming to the sports park. Mayor, Commissioners, City Manager, we've had this event, we had it last year, but it was the first year. They brought this down, the uh, South Texas Amateur Athletic Union chapter, it's the largest one in the country. They brought this event down to us. Um, it's new to our valley, but it's over 100 years. The uh, organization's 100 years old. It's a top-level amateur youth, uh, youth and adult, from young kids to 99 years of age. It's ex exactly what they do. Now we're going to bring nationals down for other events. So can you hear that? We're going to bring nationals down for soccer. They're organizing out of San Antonio, but it's an actual national championship. So we're going to continue to try to drive sales tax and other things and retail and everything as much as possible with this sports park and other locations. Um, it's going to happen hopefully next year as well. They want to make this their home. Not Georgetown, not San Antonio, not Corpus, not all the other cities, but Brownsville. So thanks for the uh, facilities that we've had upgraded. Um, it's really helpful with us. <laughs> good job, Chris. Chris, thank you for the keep good up, work keep you're up doing. Good work. And just to let you know, the director from the South Texas AAU, I asked him, why would you pick Brownsville? He's like, Charlie, you can't beat the beach. You can't beat Mexico there. You know, we're on the border by the sea, and, but what we do have is a place to, for, for, for tournaments now. So we're attracting, you know, the hotel uh, industry was here. Our job as commissioners, not just to be commissioners, but we have to advocate for our city. And through the Parks and Rec has done a great job to, to bring in 60, 70 teams. They're all going to stay in hotels. The, the ladies that are coming here for golf this weekend, you know, these hotels, they're going to be utilized. So we, our job has the city of Brownsville, and this is my opinion, we're never going to have skyscrapers here. What we do have is 98% good weather, and people are starting to realize that about Brownsville, that we have the space and facilities to provide, that South Padre Island can't provide something like the sports park, but we can work together. Matamoros loves the fact that we're bringing that in because they don't have facilities like that in Matamoros. So we're a regional approach city and, and through sports and leisure, and we got to put that in our heads that that's what we are, this city. Yes, we want industry. We have the Port of Brownsville. We have an industrial park close to it that we're starting, but Brownsville is a sports and leisure city, and we need to start promoting that as such to lure people in because people aren't traveling to Mexico anymore. People aren't traveling out of, out of, out of, out of the country anymore. They're looking for places in the United States. And what, what better than Brownsville, Texas, where you have 98, 99% good weather. So I'll, I'll move on to the border wall. I've uh, talked to city staff, people from Solomon Ortiz's office, and I'd like to take this time to thank the city of Brownsville uh, staff, Peter Goodman, Charlie Kabler, Everybody who's, who's been working with DHS, uh, Salomon Ortiz's office has stepped up. I'm, I'm glad Salomon is, 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 is hearing our, our, our request. You know, he's, he's taken initiative. He's on the, I know his assistant, Denise Blanchard, who's cute, by the way. She, she's working her butt off to get this issue worked out for the citizens of Brownsville. You know, she has a deep love for Brownsville, and she's uh, committed 
to holding people accountable from DHS. You know, without Solomon Moore and Thesis' help, I don't think we'll be able to get what we're going to get later on, later on down the line. And with, with the mayor's efforts and with the commissioner's efforts, we're bombarding DHS from all angles. You know, it's one thing for the mayor to fight his fight, and I totally, totally applaud him for what he's doing, but you got to give us the opportunity to hit from all angles. And what I know of the government working for them is you got to come at them all angles, because if not, you give them a door, they'll, they'll take it. So together, this commission is, is working, along with Solomon Ortiz, to get things done. And I, and I want to thank him and our city staff for, for going above and beyond. And I want to thank you for making those statements, uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Atkinson, because it is going to take everybody's uh, efforts there to hopefully bring a positive resolution for the city of Brownsville. And in fact, also TBC, I will be going with TBC tomorrow. Uh, that's the Texas Border Coalition, so you're right, it takes everybody. Okay, uh, that's it, uh, Commissioner Atkinson? Yeah, I'm done. Next, uh, my Commissioner Camarillo. L last week I uh, attended a Weed and Seed meeting, um, and I want to just recruit for Weed and Seed. They're going to have a summer, summer program, and they're in need of volunteers, not just of young adults, but even ourselves. So we had an opportunity to spend one day, two or three hours, to help the Weed and Seed program out. Each program has about 150 kids, and uh, I know Parks and Rec has been, um, you know, has stepped up to help them out with different things and providing resources. But we didn't see it is dependent on not just the staff that's provided through Cameron County and probation office, but they really need a lot of help with some of our youth that would not have another place to go and that are going to come to our parks and schools and, uh, and participate in summer activities. So I would like to at this time, you know, any youth, any volunteer who's not going to be doing anything in summer, you have an older son or daughter coming down from college that, you know, just plans to hang out. Please have them visit uh, the Park and Rec's office and or the Weed and Seed office, which can be located at the Oliveda, um, Oliveda Park, because they're in need of, uh, of volunteers to make their summer program um, a good program. Next, I want to thank the students at, um, at Stell Middle School, uh, who we met with about a week ago uh, at their campus. They're with the Project Citizen and Mr. Leal, who's their, who's their teacher, their sponsor. These are young adults, eighth graders, who have done research and have found issues with certain things around Bronzo. Their main issue right now is, is Oliveda Park. And so they had stopped me one day. They, they, they were chasing me down at Oliveda and, and asked me to, to hear their concerns, and I did. And one of the issues we did focus on, and with the help of Mr. Patterson, which I really do appreciate because he educated the kids and myself on, uh, about Oliveda Park and, and how Oliveda Park became an actual park, which was once a landfill and how the ground shifts because it was a landfill. It was very interesting. It was very interesting to get the kids involved and motivated. Um, and so I want to thank you, Chris, very much for, for being there and, and to taking the time just to interact with the youth because we sometimes don't do that uh, very often. Uh, but you did, and I appreciate that. But I also want to thank Ms. Piedenet and, 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 and Mrs. Timmer and, and others that were there as well to hear the kids' issues and work on, on, work on uh, policy uh, uh, agendas to hopefully solve them and move forward. So thank you all very much. I also want to thank GMS, Mr. Torres. Uh, this past weekend we had some dumpsters out on, on uh, Calle Espacio uh, and, uh, and in back of the fire station on 281 and, and that basically just served as an opportunity for residents to, to dump bulk items that they had in their homes and uh, did not want to throw them on the curb because it would either over, overflow the, the street and, and, and create a blockage. Um, Mr. Torres has been very, very helpful. I want to thank him for all of his work um, in providing, you know, uh, an access for residents to uh, to throw materials, large bulk materials, on a given on a given weekend. So I want to really thank him for all of his help. Uh, lastly, I want to talk about uh, Earth Day. Um, tomorrow, as you know, is Earth Day, and um, I think it's it's I think we come to realize much more how the environment is is extremely important, and and the things that we do on a daily basis. Um, is significant in protecting our environment. And just because tomorrow is Earth Day doesn't mean we should just, well, we'll turn off a few lights here and, and unplug a, a few cell phone charges, uh, chargers. This is something we need to do every single day. Uh, we need to save. We need to reduce the waste that we have. And we do a lot of waste. Um, it just doesn't go beyond of throwing the, tr you know, recycling, and although that is very important, but, you know, turning our lights out if we're not going to be at home. Turn off our air conditioning because we're not going to be there. Uh, 
um, doing things that really make an in, a, a major, major impact on our community by being very cognizant of waste and usage of water and things of that nature. And so I encourage every citizens of Bronzeville to not only be cognizant of that tomorrow, but each and every day that follows. And um, with that, please participate in any activities with Earth Day. Um, I know tomorrow will be at Children's Museum. They will have a big event, and um, that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I'd like to make a positive announcement also. On Friday, uh, uh, Arbor Day will be celebrated at Garge Elementary. The kids from each grade level uh, uh, did a contest, art contest, and the one was picked as the best from each grade level and will receive a certificate. Uh, this is being sponsored by Lowe's, our new uh, 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 store here in Brownsville, and uh, be sure to thank them if you ever shop there. But it's being sponsored by Lowe's, and there'll be a celebration there Friday, 10 o'clock at Garza Elementary. Um, there is a proclamation, um, uh, Earth Day proclamation. Uh, Mayor, Secretary. I'm going to read that one tomorrow, Mayor, at the event I'm attending. I'd like to do the healthy communities. If uh, representatives from healthy communities could come forward. Mayor and Commission, it is uh, with great, great pleasure and honor that I'd like to recognize the Healthy Communities uh, Environmental Trend Vendors of Bronzeville through this proclamation. As I mentioned in our earlier remarks to the workshop, this is an organization who I believe are the pioneers of recycling in Bronzeville and taking care of our community. Um, so I want to thank them very, very much for, for the things that they've done. A proclamation of the City Commission of Brownsville, Texas, recognizing healthy communities, environmental trend benders for its dedication to the well-being of our city. Whereas Healthy Communities of Bronzeville, HCB, was founded in 2001 as the Healthy Communities Initiative, was incorporated in 2002, the results of 10 community meetings with more than 100 founding members that came from neighborhoods, churches, businesses, educational institutions, healthcare entities, and other community groups. And whereas the HCB Environmental Trend Benders of Bronzeville has its mission, has its mission the promotion of the well-being of Bronzeville. And whereas H HCB Environmental Trend Benders of Bronzeville has a vision of everyone living in a healthy, clean, and beautiful city. And whereas HCB has three major areas of focus, education, health, and the environment, and further seeks to make a difference through creativity, accountability, collaboration, and leadership. And whereas HCB Environmental Trend Benders on April the 15th made available 40,000 copies of its anti-littering coloring book aimed at getting students and their families interested in an anti-litter campaign. And whereas since 2001, dedicated volunteers with HCB Environmental Trend Benders has spent literally hundreds of hours to implement the solutions to which they are dedicated, and for, th and, and for this we are grateful. Now, therefore, we, the members of the City Commission of the City of Bronzeville, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested by the charter of said city, on behalf of our citizens, do hereby recognize healthy communities, environmental trend benders of Bronzeville, for its continued dedication to purifying our environment and to providing a healthier community for all citizens. Done on this, the 21st day of April, 2009, signed by the mayor and the rest of the city commission. Congratulations. I would just like to take this opportunity to thank you for this recognition. We are very honored. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you for the work you do and all the volunteers. Okay. Uh, the next, which one's the next one? The Brotherhood of Faith. The Brotherhood, Brotherhood of Faith. Come on up, guys. Then Week of the Young Child. Come on up. You have the proclamation?
Okay. It's an honor. It's an honor to be. Uh, it's an honor. <clears throat> Come on up, guys. It's an honor to be doing this proclamation for these great gentlemen that are always out there giving back to this community. Uh, it's really an honor. <clears throat> yeah, you have it. Yeah. They brought it. Sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. A proclamation of the City Commission of Bronzeville, Texas, commending the, brother, the Brotherhood of Faith Club for its continuing community service. Whereas the Brotherhood of Faith Club, an organization of dedicated veterans, was established in Bronzeville in 2003 with a mission of community service, especially students of the Bronzeville Independent School District, BISD. And whereas, through fundraising and donations from the public, the club is able to distribute school supplies such as backpacks, writing paper, pencils, and other items to needy students in BISD, and also has been able to award 16 bicycles to deserving fifth grade students and an annual scholarship to a graduating high school senior. And whereas the Brotherhood of Faith Club is involved in various functions to help members of the community, including flag raising ceremonies for public events, Santa Claus visits to schools, homes and daycare centers, and most importantly, the collection of canned goods for local distribution at parishes to be distributed to needy families. And whereas the Brotherhood of Faith Club has as its main objective to give back to the community by supporting those who are less fortunate and who need help the most. And whereas these charitable, charitable acts cannot, however, be accomplished without the generous support of local businesses and members of the public whose donations go to those who are in the greatest need. Now, therefore, we, the members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested by the Charter said City, and on behalf of all our citizens, do hereby recognize and commend the Brotherhood of Faith Club for its many contributions to the welfare of our community, and further wish it great success far far into the future. Done on the 21st day of April, 2009, signed by our mayor and this, this city commission. Congratulations, gentlemen. Mayor, commissioners, this is a great moment for us. We've been doing this for the past six years, and uh, our main objective are the kids of of BISD. We'd like to thank you all. We'd like to thank Carlos Cisneros for looking into our club. And uh, we, we're growing, we're growing, and, it's, and again I have to say it's all about kids and it's all about Brownsville. Thank you and God bless you all. Week of the Young Child. I believe they left. Oh, oh okay, there you go. Come on up. Yes. There's the angel. I think it's only the lady left. I should read. I'm done. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Come on up. I'll talk to you right now. A proclamation of the City Commission of Brownsville, Texas, declaring April 19th through the 25th, 2009, to be the week of the young child. Whereas the City of Brownsville and the University of Texas at Brownsville UTB Daycare Center, in cooperation with the National Association for the Education of Young Children, are celebrating the Week of the Young Child. And whereas these organizations are working to improve early learning opportunities, including literacy programs, and can provide a foundation of learning for children in Brownsville. And whereas teachers and others who make a difference in the lives of young children in Brownsville deserve thanks and recognition. And whereas public policies that support early learning for all young children are crucial to young children's futures. Now therefore we, the members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested by the Charter said City and on behalf of all our citizens, do hereby declare April 19th through April 25th, 2009 to be the week of the young child in our, in our city and further encourage all citizens to work to make a good investment in early childhood in Brownsville. Done on the 21st day of April, 2009, signed by our mayor and the Brownsville City Commission. Congratulations and thank you for everything that you guys do.
Mayor and City Commissioners, we want to thank you for this wonderful opportunity and also want to thank you for the, uh, for the continued help and, and, and foresight for our young children for the, for the City of Brownsville. Thank you very much and have, thank you, sir. <laughs> I hope you send a picture to each one of us in the to commemorate their, the event. Thank you. Consent agenda items. Okay. Uh, consent agenda items. Motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Turani, second by Commissioner Camarillo. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Boards and commissions, consideration and action to appoint or reappoint mm -hmm. citizens to the Brownsville Citizens oh, okay. Advisory Committee. Okay, um, which ones are up for reappointment? On mine, uh, my appointee, Mr. Rick Zayas, uh, opted to leave uh, for the permit for right now for the time. Okay. And Mr. Joe Wallace Garcia has submitted an application. He has shown interest in participating in the committee, so I'll nominate Joe Wallace at seat. Second. We have a motion, and a, sec a motion with Commissioner uh, Longoria, and Commissioner Cisnero. Uh, Camarillo. Camarillo. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Public hearings. So, uh, there's, there's two more appointments. Oh. Uh, Mr. Longoria, uh, Ms. Sue Alton has resigned, uh, and uh, Commissioner Atkinson, and Ms. Mary Tolman has also resigned. Sue Alton, that's uh, Commissioner Gatsas. He said in Longoria. I'm sorry, it's Commissioner Gatsas. Uh, Mary Sue Tolman, Alton. no? No, Mary Tolman is Mr. Atkinson's appointment. No. We'll find a replacement for that one. Do you have anybody? But nobody still out an application, right? No, I'm, I'll make those uh, at the next meeting. At the next meeting. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Mr. Mr. Medina. Would somebody be able to furnish? I know that you have a meeting on Thursday. Would somebody be able to we're furnish ready. Mr. Garcia package? Yes, we're ready. Thank you. Okay. So the rest of the appointments will be taken care of the next meeting. Um, let's go to six public hearings. Public hearing and action on first reading on ordinance number 235-2009-013 to rezone from dwelling C to medium retail G 4.57 acres out of lot 24, block 1 of Low Mar subdivision located at 8818 West U.S. Military Highway 281. Members of the Commission, Honorable Mayor, uh, in this zoning case, uh, they would like to have a retail a store. Um, Planning Zoning Commission will unanimously to approve this application to you. It's on U.S. 21 West of Browns. Um, you see it there on, on the pictures. 1421 going to the to the north, military going north to south on that map. So public move, hearing. Move to close. Second. Second. We have a motion to close public hearing. Uh, and second by Commissioner Turani. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion move to approve. approve. This is an action. Move item. to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Turani. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2009-014 to rezone from general retail G to dwelling G for 2.152 acres of lot 5 and 6 of block FF of Brownsville Land and Improvement Company subdivision located near Media Luna Road and Korea Street. Honorable Mayor and City Commissioners, uh, you can see Media Luna and Central Boulevard. In this particular case, the applicant would like to build uh, duplexes. Uh, he requ is required this type of zoning. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission of the Board unanimously to approve this application to you. Would it close? Second. We have a motion to close. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All motion opposed? Motion approve. carries. Motion to approve. approve. Okay, one at a time. Motion to approve by Commissioner second. Atkinson, second by Commissioner Cisneros. 
Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Number eight, public hearing in action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2009-015 to rezone from dwelling Z to professional office G for 1.0 acres of Candace and Dean subdivision located at 7385 Old Military Highway. Move close. close. Second. We have a motion to close by Commissioner uh, Tirani, second by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to approve. All opposed? Motion Aye. carries. Second. This is an action item. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Torani. Second. Second by Commissioner Camarillo. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Number nine, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2009-015-S to allow a medium retail specific use in a professional office for 1.0 acres of Candace and Dean subdivision located at 7385 Old Military Highway. This is related to the other case. This is basically an assisted living center. Uh, as you can see there, Military Old, Old Military Highway in San Pedro. Uh, mo uh, Plan zoning commission, Planning and Zoning Commission ordered the University to approve this application to mm -hmm. close. Well. We have a motion uh, to, um, to close, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Would you approve? Second. Okay, this is an action item. Would you approve? We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Action item. Consideration and action on resolution number 2009-028 suspending a rate increase proposed by Texas Gas Service Company and authorizing related actions directed toward ensuring that any rate increase is justified and reasonable. Uh, Mayor, uh, Commissioners, uh, what you have before you, we have, there's a, been a rate increase filed by Texas Gas Service Company uh, that uh, would raise the average residential bill 14.4% uh, and also commercial and you know, other uh, other gas service bills. What you have before you is a resolution that freezes rates where they are now to give us time to see if we can, <coughs> excuse me, negotiate a reasonable rate increase uh, with uh, uh, Texas Gas Service Company. Um, and if so, you know, we'd report back to you. Uh, all of the citizens, all the cities in the valley are being asked to uh, participate in this project to you know, to, to negotiate a reasonable uh, price increase. Uh, the uh, cost for, for everything would be paid by Texas Gas Service Company, believe it or not, yeah. under statute. Uh, so it's a no-cost deal for us. We ask Move you to approve, approve the resolution. Second. We have a motion to approve. We second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item 12, consideration and action to accept and approve an interlocal cooperation agreement between the city of Brownsville, Texas and the cities of Harlingen, Port Isabel, San Benito, South Padre Island, Texas and the County of Cameron for the 2009 Edward Bryan Justice Assistance Grant Program Award in the amount of $795,854. Mayor, members of the City Commission, good evening. The U.S. Department of Justice, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, Assistance has mm -hmm. awarded or allocated a disparate amount uh, Allocation amount to the, the following cities, uh, Brownsville, Harlingen, Port Isabel, San Benito, South Padre, uh, and Cameron County. The total amount for the grant application is for 795854 uh, One of the conditions is that we have an interlocal uh, agreement in place with all the cities uh, to be able to apply and receive uh, disparate allocations. In the case of the city of Brownsville, we would be receiving $400,000 out of this $795,854,000. The rest of the cities, uh, the county would be receiving 124, Harlingen would be receiving 153,505, Port Isabel is 35,000, San Benito is 50,000, and South Padre Island is $33,349. Motion uh, this to is accept and approve. A condition from the Department of Justice uh, that there be an interlocal agreement in place before any funds are allocated. Would you approve an interlocal? Second. 
a motion to approve the commission on lawyers, second the commission Camarillo. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. We will come back at a later date uh, to let you all know uh, exactly how the $400,000 are going to be uh, uh, spent. Thank you, Chief. You, Chief. Item 13, consideration and action to accept the Brownsville Citizens Advisory Committee's recommendation for a 2008-2009 CTBG budget amendment related to the Brownsville Public Library. Uh, this monies are reprogrammed monies that will go to the library in the sum of $22,000 uh, for computers. New computers. Put approved. Second. We have a motion approved by Commissioner Camarillo, second by Commissioner Longoria. Any discussion? <coughs> Just one question, um, these, because we're going through very tough times, uh, these 22 computers, they cannot make it one more year, right? That's what you're saying? No, according to the library, no, sir. So it's this would really be for the South Coast Library. It's a necessity? Yes, sir. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mm -hmm. uh, item 14. Item 14, consideration and action to award a contract for the purchase and delivery of 11 2009 year model police motorcycles for the Brownsville Police Department. Good evening, Mayor, City Commissioners. Uh, staff recommendation is to award a contract for the purchase and delivery of 11 uh, 2009 year model police motorcycles for the Brownsville Police Department to Brownsville's uh, Sports Center Incorporated of Brownsville, Texas, a low responsible bidder at a, a unit price of $16,250.50 for a total bid amount of $178,000. $755.50. Uh, as part of the contract, um, the vendor will provide a standard maintenance um, for a unit price of $200 per uh, motorcycle. And this is for every 2,000 miles or every three months, whichever uh, course first. And also the warranty is also for 36 months. And this is a warranty that we, we're going to have for these motorcycles. Delivery is uh, from 10 to 15 days. Money is in place. Move to approve, and the best part I like is funding for the equipment is from the forfeiture fund. Number five. Forfeiture Good fund. Deal. That is correct. <coughs> we have a motion by Commissioner Second for Annie, a second by Commissioner Garza. Any discussion? How many CCs is it, are these bikes? <laughs> this is more. I can tell you that right away. It's a 1300. 1300? Yes. Wow. And they're, they're just as durable as what they're using now? That is correct, sir. Some the other warranty? cities have those motorcycles Pardon already. Me? Some other cities are using those motorcycles already. Okay. okay. And the warranty is the best you can get, six months? Or how many miles? 36 months. 2000, uh, what well the warranty is for? Three years. 36 months is what you said. 36 months. 36 months? Yes. Or how many miles? Uh, the miles, it, it's for the, um, for, the maintenance. for the maintenance, every 2,000 miles or every three months. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item 15. Item 15, consideration and action to award a contract for street paving and drainage improvements for Rustic Manor Drive. Would approve? Second. Hold on, who's, who's, who's? Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second. Motion made by Commissioner Longoria, second by Commissioner Camarillo. Any discussion? There's who's who have the project? Who, who got the bid? I'm sorry? I who, couldn't who got it? Who got the bid? Uh, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Klausner and Sons out of Mercedes, Texas. They're the low responsible bidder for $159,150. Was there any local people out there? Yes. Uh, if you can see on your package, there's a, there's an, uh, a bid tabulation. It just happens that they were the low, the low bidders. Who, who was next? The next to them was um, that from Brownsville. Of uh, Brownsville, that is correct. That was JMI Construction. Who? JMI. JMI. JMI, and then Did the next one the was uh, GNT Paving. Did, Did they fall on the five percent? No, no. That's why. That's why I didn't brought it to your attention. The five percent. Okay. Can we have a motion? Oh, we already have a motion and second. All, all Aye. in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Can I have a motion adjourned? Motion second. Adjourned by Commissioner Longoria, second by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Can stay.